फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार एंड वेलकम सो फार वी हैव डिस्कस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट इन साइड दैट वी हैव डिस्कस करंट अकाउंट ट्रांजेक्शन कैपिटल अकाउंट ट्रांजेक्शन एरर्स एंड ऑमिशन एंड द रिजर्व अकाउंट इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द फॉरन एक्सचेंज रेट्स द फॉरन एक्सचेंज रेट्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द क्वेश्चन अराइज इज वाई we need foreign exchange by the way what is the meaning of foreign exchange the foreign exchange means all the currencies all the currencies except domestic currency guys right? so can we say all the foreign currencies all the foreign currencies means the foreign exchange why we need the foreign currencies so we need the foreign currency for the import transactions for example if we have to import For example, if I have to, Mr. Rahul has to import one laptop from USA, right? So I have to pay the USA seller in the US dollar terms. So payment has to be made in the US dollar terms, and I, being the Indian citizen, I am visiting USA. I will not have the US dollar. in my pocket i will be having the indian rupee so i will convert my indian rupee into dollar i will convert my indian rupee into dollar similarly in case of export transaction in case of export transaction when anyone exports the services for example the software services are exported by infosys so the buyer of the service can pay in the us dollar suppose the the the, the buyer pays in the us dollar so infosys it is step it is located in india it has to pay the uh, salaries it has to pay the other expenses so it will convert this us dollar into indian rupee so that it can use this amount in the indian market so import export then capital movement etc so all the balance of payment transactions all the transactions which we record in the balance of payment all those are happening in one or the other currency and there is maybe requirement of exchanging the one currency into the another currency now question arises whether each currency is having same value whether each currency is having same value so us dollar indian rupee then we have pound then we have euro then we have chinese renmin renminbi we have japanese yen right so whether the value of each of the each of these currencies is same or different the answer is very 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 easy every currency has the different value and why different value because the value of any currency depends upon the level of economic development of the country it depends upon the share in the world trade of a particular country it depends upon the demand and supply 
इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन पोलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन इन्फ्लेशन एंड सो ऑन सो देर आर लॉट ऑफ फैक्टर्स विच डिटरमिन द वैल्यू ऑफ द करेंसी ऑफ ए पर्टिकुलर कंट्री राइट द पॉइंट इज दट ईच ऑफ द करेंसी इज हैविंग डिफरेंट वैल्यू नाउ टू परफॉर्म द ट्रांजेक्शन द ट्रांजेक्शन दैट वी डिस्कस इम्पोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट कैपिटल मूवमेंट सैलरी पेमेंट वेन वी वॉन्ट टू वेन वी वॉन्ट टू कन्वर्ट द करेंसीज फॉर दोज ट्रांजेक्शंस देन सर्टन रिलेशन हैज टू बी स्टैब्लिश बिटवीन द डिफरेंट करेंसीज so certain relation has to be established between us dollar and indian rupee that how much indian rupee are required to buy one us dollar how much pound is required to buy one us dollar how many euros are required to buy one us dollar and so on so the relation between the domestic currency and the foreign currency or the relation between one foreign currency and another foreign currency has to be established and that relation is called uh, exchange rate that relation is called exchange rate now the value this value the value it can be either based upon the market forces or it can be decided by the government it can be fixed by the government so either it can be based upon the market forces or it can be fixed by the government based upon these two criteria we 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 determine the exchange rate regime right so there is a concept of exchange rate regime the exchange rate regime means that what is the culture what is the system of determination of exchange rate whether the exchange rate is determined by the market forces or it is determined by the government or it is a combination of both the market forces and the intervention of the government so all these all this system is basically you know represented by the exchange rate regime so let us see in the coverage of this session so in this session we are going to cover exchange rate regime which can be floating exchange rate regime fixed or managed float we will discuss each one of that and before we discuss the exchange rate regime first we will discuss the exchange rate what is the meaning of exchange rate the ex it is the rate it is the rate at which home currency for example indian rupee i n r indian rupee is exchanged for one unit of foreign currency let us say for one unit unit of us dollar the rate at which so that means how many indian rupee we need to pay so that we can get one us dollar suppose for example we need to pay 70 rupees to buy 1 us dollar so the exchange rate between the rupee and the dollar will be 70 rupees per us dollar 70 rupees per us dollar so this is the concept of exchange rate and it varies depending upon the demand and the supply of currencies so if the demand of rupee increases the value of rupee will increase and the exchange rate will decrease and vice versa so this demand and supply concept we will discuss in detail in the next session when we when we will discuss the fluctuation in the exchange rate how the depreciation in the exchange rate happens how the appreciation happens devaluation revaluation so all those concept we will discuss and at that point of time we will go get, go into much more detail in the exchange rate and the different aspect associated with the exchange rate as of now we will focus upon the exchange rate regime so the foreign exchange 
refers to the mechanism of the ways and means by which payment in connection with international trade are affected so we discussed that we have to dis we have to perform import transaction and export transaction for conducting the import transaction export transaction capital movement etc we have to make certain payment and the mechanism of the ways and means by which this payment is done is foreign exchange it refers to all the currencies other than the domestic currency of a given country for example india's domestic currency is indian rupee and all other currencies like us dollar british pound etc are the foreign exchange now the rate of exchange or exchange rate is the price of one currency expressed in terms of another currency right so in the in our example we said the price of one currency expressed in terms of another currency that means the price of indian rupee is 70 expressed in terms of us dollar that is a one dollar it is reflection of the external value of the domestic currency so this exchange rate represents the external value so for example if one dollar is equal to 70 rupees or in another situation one dollar is equal to 50 rupees in out of these two situation in which situation the external value of domestic currency is high this is the question that i'm asking to you out of this and this in which of the situation the external value of indian rupee or the domestic currency is high the answer is in this case in this case we can pay 50 rupees and buy one dollar and in this case we have to pay 70 rupees to buy one dollar so definitely the value of indian rupee is much more in the second example second situation so in this this concept we will get into much detail when we discuss the concept of appreciation depreciation valuation revaluation etc so don't worry it should also be noted that exchange rate is not always constant it give it 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 goes on changing from time to time on account of change in the demand for and supply of the foreign currency why it is required so different countries have different currencies right so we have india america the currencies rupees dollar with different values we already discussed that each of the countries having different value when trade takes place trade means export and import the persons of these countries have to convert their currencies to another country so i take the i took the example of laptop infosys when the buyer and the buyer or seller or both both have to convert the currency to make the payment for this purpose the concept of foreign exchange came into operation now exchange rate regime the way an authority manages its currency the way an authority manages its currency in relation to the other currencies and the foreign exchange market right so whether there is the role of market forces only or there is government intervention or it is a combination of both there are three different possible situations right whether the exchange rate is determined determined by the market or exchange rate is determined by the government intervention or there is a combination of both this system this is called exchange rate regime the way an authority manages its currency in relation to the other currencies and the and the full action market now if we see the foreign exchange rate regimes it can be of primarily two categories so there are primarily two categories one is the floating exchange rate and this is also called as flexible exchange rate right and another is targeted exchange rate so we have targeted exchange rate and we have 
floating exchange rate. In the floating exchange rate, the exchange rate is determined by the market. When I say market, it means the forces of demand and supply. The forces of demand and supply. Another is targeted exchange rate. Here, the exchange rate is determined by monetary authorities. And it can further be classified into three different categories. Number one, number two, and number three. So what are these categories? Let us see. F first is the fixed exchange rate. Fixed exchange rate means there is constant target. There is constant target. So the rate is completely fixed. The rate is completely fixed fixed this fixed exchange rate can further be classified into two categories one is fixed peg and another is currency boards so when the fixed exchange rate happens by the central bank when central bank is determining the fixed exchange rate then this is called fixed peg and in case the central bank is not responsible for determining the fixed exchange rate rather this is the central government rather this is the central government then this is called currency board right so fixed exchange rate it can be classified into fixed peg and currency board coming back to the targeted exchange rate so targeted exchange rate one type is fixed exchange rate another type is managed float managed float in the managed float so we can see there is a word float and there is a word managed float means market based managed means there is some kind of government intervention right so this managed float is nothing but a combination of floating exchange rate and this fixed exchange rate when we combine the floating exchange rate and fixed exchange rate and both the market forces and the government are working together then this is called managed float so most of the countries including India most of the countries including India they are working through the system so in this system the government will allow the movement of exchange rate between a certain band between a certain level for example in India the RBI will say that okay if the exchange rate is between 55 rupees per dollar to 80 rupees per dollar then we will do nothing but in case it goes below 55 dollar 55 rupees per dollar or it goes above uh, 80 rupees per dollar in that case we will intervene because in that case there will be adverse impact upon the economy because of the too much movement in the exchange rate so in case of managed float there is government intervention but government intervention is very very limited it is happening only and only in case of exception now the third category is crawling peg this crawling peg is here there is a band the upper limit of the exchange rate and lower limit of the exchange rate primarily you need to know these three the floating exchange rate the fixed exchange rate and managed float these are the three primary categories now let us see in detail these three categories the first category is flexible or floating exchange rate regime So here the exchange rate is determined by the forces of demand and supply, right? There is no official or government intervention in the foreign exchange market. And this is also called as the floating rate of foreign exchange. 
Now, when I say it is determined by the demand and supply forces, what are those forces? So, these are the major forces or factors which influence the foreign exchange rate in case of the floating exchange rate market. <clears throat> so, let us see what are these factors. The first factor is differentials in the rate of inflation. So, in case the domestic inflation, domestic rate of inflation is high, that means the purchasing power of the domestic currency or rupee will go down. If the purchasing power goes down, definitely the value of Indian rupee will come down. The value of Indian rupee will come down. And vice versa, if the inflation is controlled, then value will be high because the purchasing power is high. Second factor, differentials in the interest rate. So normally the interest rate is high in developing countries like India as compared to the developed countries like USA. Normally the interest rate is high in the developing countries like India as compared to the developed countries like USA. So as a result the money flows from developed countries to the developing countries right so the supply of foreign currency increases in the developing countries and the value of developing countries currencies increases right in other words we can say if the rate of interest increases in a country the value of the domestic currency will increase right the external value of the domestic currency will increase right third public debt so if any country is having high level of public debt that means there will be high future obligation so in this case the value of the currency will be low and vice versa next the terms of trade terms of trade means what is the status of export and import? What is the status of export and import? If any country, if, if suppose we take the example of India. In India, the import is more than export. That means the demand of foreign currency is more than the demand of domestic currency. Because when we are importing, we have to make the payment in the foreign currency. Right. So when import is more than export, in that case, the currency of the domestic country is having less value. Right. So the terms of trade are unfavorable towards India and the value will go down and vice versa. So in the future, if we are able to increase our export more than import, then our value will suddenly increase because in that case we will be having more amount of foreign currency but our payment requirement will be less so the demand of foreign currency from the side of Indians will reduce when there is no demand then we, the value of the foreign currency will be less and value of our currency will be high next is political stability and economic performance so the countries like Syria where there is a huge political instability, the countries like Iran, Afghanistan, their currencies will not be having high value because there is huge political instability. Economic performance, right? So if any country is doing good, for example, China has been doing good for a period of over three decades. When the China has been doing good, the value of Chinese currency will go up, right? So these are the major demand and supply forces so inflation interest rate public debt terms of trade 
पोलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी इकोनॉमिक परफॉर्मेंस राइट एंड देर कैन बी वन मोर फैक्टर दैट इज द लेवल ऑफ इनकम ऑफ पीपल इफ द लेवल ऑफ इनकम इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड द इम्पोर्ट 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 क्वांटिटी इज मोर बिकॉज वेन द लेवल ऑफ इनकम ऑफ ए कंट्रीज पीपल इंक्रीज दे टेन टू बाय मोर फॉरिन गुड्स सो वेन दे टेन टू बाय मोर फॉरिन गुड्स देन इम्पोर्ट विल इंक्रीज द टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड विल बी अनफेवरेबल टू अस एंड इट विल रिड्यूज द वैल्यू ऑफ डोमेस्टिक करेंसी राइट इट विल रिड्यूज द वैल्यू ऑफ डोमेस्टिक करेंसी फ्रेंड्स एट दिस टाइम I will give you a little hint about two different aspects when we discuss the exchange rate. One is exchange rate, another is external value of foreign currency. Please understand this concept carefully. If you are able to understand this concept carefully, then this exchange rate concept will become very very easy for you. So let us say the exchange rate between US dollar and rupee is one US dollar is equal to seventy rupees, right? Another example, let us take one US dollar is equal to. Thirty-five rupees, right? So in this case, suppose this is the case one. This is the case two. So in the case one, the exchange rate is high, but the external value of foreign currency, sorry, external value of domestic currency, the external value of domestic currency that is rupee is low. because we need to give 70 rupees to buy one us dollar right so the external value of domestic currency is low in the second case one us dollar is equal to 35 rupees that means we need to pay only 35 rupees to buy one us dollar that means the external value of the rupee has increased but exchange rate is decreased the exchange rate is decreased right so this exchange rate and external value of domestic currency both are different i just wanted to tell you about this thing right so when we discuss the concept of devaluation revaluation etc then this concept will be much more useful but still i just wanted to let you know about this concept so even in this in these factors i was discussing about the value concept i was discussing about the value concept that in case the domestic inflation is high the value of the external value will come down exchange rate will increase when the interest rate in india increases the external value of indian rupee will increase the exchange rate will come down right now what are the advantages and disadvantages of the foreign floating exchange rate the first advantage is that there is continuous and automatic adjustment through the foreign exchange rate so there is no tension on the side of government the exchange rate increases decreases automatically right so i hope you remember the concept of invisible hand theory that we discussed in the economic survey so the invisible hand theory automatically works and it benefits all the stakeholders the buyers the sellers the producers the government and it rewards efficiency it rewards those countries we are which are able to maintain reasonable level of inflation which are able to provide high rate of interest which are able to ensure political stability right so it rewards efficiency second destabilizing effect of speculation is removed so the speculation becomes very very less because everything is open 
there is no secrecy everyone knows that market forces are determining the exchange rate it reduces the need for central banks to hold large amount of foreign currency right so in the fixed exchange rate regime the government might have to maintain huge amount of foreign exchange reserve so that in case of any eventuality the government may have to control the exchange rate through putting the money in, into the market or withdrawing the money from the market but in case of floating exchange rate there is no such requirement disadvantages no guarantee that a rate will clear a balance of payment deficit so there are always chances of bop deficit going high right we may not be able to control bop deficit and because of that we may be in a, we may be in a situation where we will be having the shortage of foreign exchange and we will become dependent upon the outside country for the supply of foreign exchange second effects on domestic inflation yes so this exchange rate can impact the domestic rate of inflation right uncertainty is there and the foreign currency reserves are kept anyways by the central bank so anyways central bank has to keep certain amount of foreign exchange reserve for maintaining its international obligations under the bank of international settlement under the imf etc so anyways this reserve have to be maintained now the next system is fixed exchange rate regime so in this case exchange rate for a currency is fixed by the government the government undertakes to buy foreign currency when the exchange rate becomes weaker and sell foreign currency when the rate of exchange gets stronger right so the government continuously monitors the situation and this system is no longer in use because this this system is having the secret operations right this this system is actually disturbs the international free trade so what are the disadvantages and advantages advantages number 1 it provides certainty the government knows how much is the value of exchange rate and the value of import and export so there is a kind of certainty in the policy making etc it helps controlling the inflation because we know how much is the import cost we know how much is the export value so inflation may be controlled third it provides international price stability in the international market the prices of our goods and services will be stable but there are disadvantages first of all this rate has to be continuously revised there has to be continuous revision in this rate secondly it can impact the fiscal policy because the government may have to spend some amount from its pocket to maintain this fixed exchange rate and there can be a scope of speculation why this fixed exchange rate is not being adopted as of now because the rate of inflation is different in the different countries right and it is very very difficult to maintain the same exchange rate for a long period of time the level of growth is different in different countries and it is it is vulnerable to the speculation now the third third system is managed regime managed float regime so this is a combination of this is a combination of floating or flexible and the fixed exchange rate regime right so it's a combination so in this case the central bank intervenes and it maintains certain reserves to ensure 
that exchange rate stays within the targeted value right so it performs the function of sterilization of economy I hope you remember this concept this concept we have discussed in the in the money and banking right so sterilization of economy means the central bank will withdraw the foreign exchange from the local market when the well the quantity of foreign exchange is very high in the market and vice versa right so if there is oversupply of foreign exchange in the local market in that case central bank will withdraw the money and vice versa now there are different types of regimes let us see a line about each of them although i am sure that upsc will rarely ask these concepts but still let us discuss let's not take the chance so in the different type of regimes these are the uh, less frequently used or very rare really frequent rarely used regimes first is the concept of dollarization so in this case the country uses the foreign currency in parallel or in parallel to or instead of the domestic currency right so in a country when the domestic currency and foreign currency both are parallelly used then this is called dollarization for example the countries like panama zimbabwe they they adopt this practice so this is called dollarization secondly currency boards we have already seen so in this in the in the case in the case of currency board there is a monetary authority which maintain a fixed exchange rate with a fixed with a with a foreign currency right so the countries like hong kong bulgaria they adopt the concept of currency boards third is monetary union so group of countries using a common currency by issued by a common regional central bank right for example the euro euro union maintains this monetary union and they use the currency euro which is issued by the european central bank ecb so this european central bank is the common regional central bank which issues the common currency which is euro number number 4 float with discretionary intervention so this is nothing but managed float so we have already discussed in detail right so in this case exchange rates are determined in the foreign exchange market however authorities can and do intervene so this system is being followed in india so in india we are following managed float system india bangladesh sri lanka we are using managed float system number 5 pure float or independent floating the exchange rate is determined in the market without public sector intervention right so this is basically flexible or floating we have already discussed so the countries like japan new zealand usa they practice and use this flexible system and traditional peg or fixed exchange rate system this also we have discussed and this has two uh, concept crawling pegs and crawling bands band means there is a range upper range and lower range and pegs means that this is under the fixed exchange rate system right so this system is not in use now right now foreign exchange market so what is foreign exchange market a market where the exchange of different currencies take place the foreign exchange market is a market in which foreign currencies are bought and sold very simple the buyers and sellers who can buy and sell so buyers and sellers include individuals firms foreign exchange brokers commercial banks and central bank it is the largest market in the world 
and there is no central trading location there, is, there are no set hours of trading so unless the capital market where there are set number of hours when there are set number of places this foreign exchange market is having no central location no central timing the prices and other terms are determined by the computerized negotiations what are the functions of this market so the first function is transfer function the transfer of one country's currency into the another currency credit function that means borrowing etc third is hedging function hedging function means basically ensuring it's a kind of insurance right so ensuring the external value of any foreign currency right so when an assurance is given that whatever is the market rate of foreign currency in future but you can buy or sell this currency at a fixed rate from us that is called hedging this foreign exchange market it can be of two types one is spot market and another is forward market spot market means when there is immediate receipt and payment of the transactions and forward market means when the settlement of the foreign exchange transactions take place in on a specific future date right which is determined today only right so in case of a sport sport market i pay 1 us dollar and i receive 70 rupees for example in case of forward market i pay 1 us dollar today and i say that okay after after 30 days give me 68 rupees or 72 rupees or whatsoever so the settlement of the transaction takes place in future or a, or it is possible that even i am not paying any amount but we are making a deal that okay we are going to have this transaction after 30 days from today at this part at, at this particular rate so this this is the forward market so with this i complete this session in this session the major focus was upon the exchange rate regimes in the next session we will discuss about the exchange rate fluctuations the concept of depreciation appreciation uh, de devaluation revaluation etc a lot of questions are coming from that area so be careful don't miss that lecture thank you very much god bless you